Hi guys, I'm Darren and today we're going to install Arduplane on the Matec H743 Slim. So this is the H743 Slim. This will of course work on the other H series. Actually it will work on any um, flight controller that you want to put RG Pilot on. Uh, I'm saying RG Pilot, it will of course work with other RG family firmwares like RG Copter and all that lot. But I'm going to do it for fixed wing, so I'm using RG Plane. Now, the reason I want to put this tutorial out there is because I've seen a couple before where they use a different method. They just say use iNav or Betaflight to flash the firmware, but with this board in particular, it doesn't actually work it sort of hangs about 50 percent through the arrays process so i'm going to show an alternate way of installing it it's actually all on the matec website so you could read it there or you can watch the video it's no no bother either way and of course i'll put links in the description to the tools that we're going to use to do this so here is the matec website and as you can see we're looking at the page for the h743 slim and this is actually the tips page. It's well worth checking these pages out because they do have useful information on. And it actually brings up the issue about um, the, the freezing at 50% if you use Betaflight or iNav to flash the firmware. It gives you the link for the firmware here and it also takes you to this document which describes how to do the actual installation. And what we're going to do is use an ST microcontroller's tool or flashing the flight controller so the first thing to do is download and install that so i've put the link in the description to the file and all you need to do is go to the website choose your operating system they, they have it for windows and a few other operating systems put your email address in you don't need to actually sign up just put your email address in because they send you a link to download the file once you've installed it this is what you have right here the uh, stm32 cube programmer so the first thing that we're going to do is get our flight controller and what we need to do is plug in the USB while we're pressing down the DFU button. So just hold that down and plug in your USB-C. I need to plug it in the other end, that would help wouldn't it? <laughs> so, right, hold the button down, plug it in and that's it, you'll get the solid red light. So I'll, I'll leave it upside down so we can see if the lights. If you have an issue at this point because you've previously tried to flash it, just use the uh, Impulse RC driver fixer and that will get it in DFU mode and you can continue from there. So now we've loaded the program up and we have our USB connected. We just need to get it into the correct mode for USB. When you get it by default, it will be on this ST link mode. We just need to change it to USB. Um, if your USB device doesn't appear, now we just click refresh and it should appear. If uh, it doesn't, try using the uh, DFU tool for, from Impulse RC, uh, the driver fixer, and it should appear. Now, if you've plugged it in previously to Betaflight or iNav, you may have seen a different USB number. Don't worry, uh, this is the only device that's showing up. I know on my computer I've got something else in iNav that shows up as USB 1 but this is 100% the flight controller. So if I unplug it and do a refresh, you'll see it disappears and there's no DFU devices. So this is only looking, so I've got to plug it back in. This is only looking for DFU devices. So plug it back in, we have it. So now we're in USB mode, we have our flight controller, we need to click connect. So the next thing we need to do is click on this, uh, it looks like a download button, but this is the erasing and programming section. So you can see I've already installed it. This will be blank when you get it, so don't worry about that. But all we're going to do is click full trip erase. And then click OK. And that's it. It will now erase the flight controller. It seems to take a little bit longer than it does in things like iNav and Betaflight, but I guess it's just doing it... Um, uh, more thoroughly I've also noticed that this percentage here doesn't really change you just let it run and in not too long it will come back and say it's complete 
there we go so you see it went jumped from zero to a hundred percent and it's executed the erase it's all good so we can click OK so the next thing that we need to do is download the firmware so if we go back to our um, H743 slim page there's a link here if we open this up in a new tab it will take us straight to the RG Plane firmware you could go through the list so if you wanted to do that we just go firmware plane stable and then you go down to Matek H743 and that will be it so what you need to do in this first instance is download RGplane with BL so BL is bootloader at the moment when it ships it has Betafloy on it so it's a different bootloader so you need to install this work version going forward you can just use RGplane.hex and update it from RGplane itself or mission planner sorry I've already downloaded that so I'm not going to do it again but what you need to do is once you've uh, downloaded it you can see I gave mine a slightly different name so I actually knew what it was rather than just calling it RGplane um, just browse find the file uh, it's I noticed in the Maytech thing it had this run after programming checked so I just checked that um, and then just click start programming so this is now flashing RGplane to the flight controller so don't worry if you get to the point where you want to change back to beta flight or you want to install INAV on it when uh, it's supported you can just flash it in the beta flight or INAV uh, configurators and that will put that firmware back on the chip but we're going for RGplane at the moment so this connection lost it caught me out the first time but it's absolutely fine it's because we've done this run after programming so the flight controller has rebooted and it will be um, now just running as a normal flight controller so that's it done so the final thing that we need to do is if we click back on this firmware you need to scroll down download and install mission planner so stay I downloaded the stable MSI is for Windows um, zip I don't know what version is supported but I'm using Windows so I went for the MSI uh, but the, the stable is the same as 1.3.74 it's the same version I don't really know what the latest is I've not tried it but I'm just using the stable release so just download the MSI and install mission planner so once you've installed it open it up and what you should get is communications ports up here so by default it's set to auto but you notice mine's not coming up so what I'm going to do is just unplug the USB and then plug it back in we now get COM6 so when I tried it before it did actually come up COM6 RG plane or something like that but if we click connect it's connected to the flight controller you can see it's upside down <laughs> so, um, and that's it it's all connected up so that is how you get it installed that's as far as I've got so far but I thought I'd share this with you seeing as it was slightly different to how you would do it normally so I hope you guys found this video useful if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider subscribing it helps get the video out to more people so they can learn how to do this I'm going to have to stop talking now for some, for some reason my throat stopped, stopped working. But um, please stay safe. Get out there. Fly your models like you stole them if you can. And I'll see you on the next one.